Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well and welcome to today's bonus upload. Guys, we are that much closer to tonight's live stream, Saturday Nightmares, live from New York with you and I. Uh, it is still a blizzard in upstate New York in the Adirondacks where I live, and this is a low estimate of accumulation, and it started last night at around 1 in the morning. We have about 20 inches already. And it's set to go on. Uh, so this is going to be very interesting. But it's a great day to share experiences. So before we get into those, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go and folks, they definitely do matter. Now everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into this very interesting and creepy bonus, shall we? Alright guys, in this bonus I am going to share with you a video clip from a logger and he captures a very strange howl. Um, I've heard wolves howl and this honestly to me sounds a, like a singular wolf. Um, very bassy and a very deep kind of howl with just an extended period of time. Uh, its lungs must be huge. And he's scared because you can see this guy take off. He jumps into his excavator. So uh, you guys will see that shortly as well. Let's get into all this. Today's first part of the upload. This first incident was stated from a gentleman that when he was in high school, he used to hang out at an ice cream shop that used to be just east of Lake Barclay Bridge. He states that at the shop one evening after dark, two older women pulled in and they seemed very shaken and scared. Being a small town and wanting to offer help if they needed it, he asked if they were okay. At first, they were reluctant to tell him what had happened. But eventually, they related the events that happened on their way back from Murray, Kentucky. They were heading through the land between the lakes, and they were nearing the overpass that goes over the terrace. They were talking, and they were just about to go over the overpass when something was in the middle of their lane. At first, they couldn't see it clearly, but as they got closer, they could see that it was a devil creature with wings and horns and red skin. They also related that this being had a pitchfork in its hand. By the time they had gotten close enough to see it and determine what it was, they were right on top of it and about to hit it. The one lady stated that they drove right through it and it disappeared. This event had scared these two ladies and they decided that stopping at the ice cream shop would be safe for them and would give them a few minutes to calm their nerves. They waited a while and left on their way home. During the time of the second event, there were stirrings and tales related concerning the red-skinned winged creature that would swoop at passing cars on a particular stretch of road. There was a gentleman who was heading home from work one evening and was approaching this stretch of road and had no idea that something scary was about to take place. As he came around the bend in the road and started to ascend the hill, there was a winged creature that swooped down at his vehicle. 
No doubt the man was scared and probably swerving to avoid a collision with this creature as it flew across the hood of his vehicle. After it made a pass, he continued his drive home, where he recounted the story to his family. News of the event spread quickly throughout the community, and a group of men went back to the location in an attempt to hunt the creature and kill it. Upon their arrival, there was no sign of this creature. Today's second part of the upload. The witness was camping with his family in Georgia Mountains near a river. At around midnight, while trying to fall asleep, he heard a noise just outside of his tent. He went to check what was making this noise. As he opened the flap of his tent, he saw a nine-foot humanoid staring at him, standing only feet away. The giant creature was dressed in a white robe-like garment. It wore no shoes or boots, and it had large feet. Alarmed and yelling, he woke his wife, who came outside when suddenly she was frozen in place. The witness was then towed by the floating humanoid to a clearing near the river where the white, silvery sphere hovered about 20 to 30 feet from the ground. A large sliding door opened on the side and the humanoid placed the witness into the craft. Inside, he was taken into a wide 30 to 50 foot long hallway and then into a control center with bright flashing lights and consoles. There he witnessed up to 20 other humanoids of the same size and clothed as the first one. The interior of the chamber was so bright that it resembled daylight. He was then taken into another room with a long black table. He was positioned and laid upon the table with approximately 8 to 10 humanoids looking at him. They examined him, but he didn't feel or notice anything done to him. After a few moments, the same humanoid that brought him inside took him back outside. He was placed next to his wife, who became mobile again. They watched jet fires from the bottom of this object as it shot away at a high rate of speed. The craft apparently left a 200-yard circle of burned grass on the ground. An interesting note from this incident was that the witness stated that the interior of the craft was larger than the exterior. Today's third part of the upload. Around midnight, a witness and his cousin were on a hunting trip and they were sitting at the edge of a hollow that consisted of thick underbrush and lots of evergreens. It continued into a large valley with a clearing that went to an ancient Indian burial site. After sitting there a while, they heard a sound of the brush rattling deep in the hollow. Whatever it was, a loud racket suggested it was large. One witness was armed with a 22 Magnum rifle with approximately 150 rounds. On his night vision scope, he could see what appeared to be a man, but upon further inspection, he realized this man was 7 to 8 feet and covered in thick, dark fur. It was slimmer than the popular Bigfoot image, almost skinny, and had a neck. Also protruding from either side of its head were large, tapered horns that were dark in color. On the top of his head also protruded a horn pointing straight up. All horns were approximately five to six inches in length and were dark in color as the creature was. The terrified witness emptied 25 round magazine into the creature, then retreated into a nearby cabin about 65 feet away. The next morning they could not find anything except for lots of spent shell casings and bullet holes in a walnut tree. He thought that he had struck the creature several times. Nearby animal traps had been sprung and all the bait was missing. On a nearby ridge, the witness located a series of tunnels made of brush and various size tree limbs, vines, and leaves. They thought that this could have been the lair of the beast, but refused to investigate any further. Today's fourth part of the upload, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. It was nearing the end of our basic training rotation and we had a few things to do before we graduated. We were going on a three-day bivouac into the woods and then come back a couple days before actual graduation. We road marched into the location we were going to be camping in and set up our campsite. There were shelter half tents scattered periodically through the area by the time it was starting to get dark. We went through the standard procedures that you follow when deployed before bedding down for the night. I was in my tent and fell fast asleep. I must have been very tired. I have no idea how long I was asleep, 
But I woke up. I was lying there listening, and it was eerily quiet. Something didn't seem right, and I couldn't place my finger on it. I decided the only way I was going to know for sure that everything was okay was to get out my tent and see. I exited my tent feet first, and upon standing up, I turned and was almost face to face with what I presume another soldier. I stood there for a few seconds, trying to figure out what this weirdo was doing. There was no movement, no sound, no indication that they were concerned about me being there. In a low whisper, I asked, what are you doing? There was no response, no movement, and this person just continued to stand there. It was fairly dark, but there was enough moonlight that I could make out a clear silhouette of this supposed person. I was beginning to think to myself that maybe they didn't hear me, and I asked a little bit louder, what are you doing? Still nothing, no response, no movement. I started to get a little concerned. All of a sudden, I started to hear the sound of footsteps on the dirt roadway that was just 40 or so feet from my tent. I turned to see what was going on, and I could clearly see that there was another company of trainees moving into the area. I watched them for a few seconds, and they turned back to what I thought to be a person standing there. They were gone. No sign of them anywhere. I heard no movement from them. It was just like they disappeared into thin air. There were plenty of leaves and tree limb debris in the area that surely would have heard them depart the area. I'm not saying this was a ghost, a Bigfoot, or any other type of cryptid creature. I don't know what it was, other than it was creepy as hell. Today's fifth part of the upload. This woman lives on a farm, and there's a hundred acre parcel of land that is owned by a neighbor that adjoins her property. She and her husband were maintaining that 100-acre parcel for their neighbor in exchange for the right to ride their horses on that property. One afternoon, she got a call from the neighbor who sounded a bit frantic on the phone. He was an older gentleman who frequently hunted in a small patch of woods on the back of that 100-acre parcel. He called and asked if she had recently been riding her horse on the property, and she related that she had not. He seemed relieved and began to relate the events of that morning. He had gone into the patch of woods on the back of the property and found a place to sit and call turkeys on, just an edge of a small clearing that was maybe 40 to 50 yards wide. He thought it would be a good place to try to lure in an old tom, because he'd be able to see them coming from across the clearing. He had gotten into position, sat down, and decided to wait a bit before calling. He'd been sitting there for about 15 to 20 minutes when he heard the sound of something moving through the woods in the direction of the midpoint of that clearing. He stated at first glance it looked like a bear down on all fours walking into the clearing. He said it walked maybe 15 yards into the clearing and stood up like a man. It looked around for a few seconds before it walked across the clearing on two legs and back into the woods. The man left the woods soon after it went out of sight. He felt the need to warn her about this sighting of this creature. He suggested that she not ride in that area for a while. He didn't know what it was, but he was sure that it was not a bear. He also said that it walked like a man as it moved across the clearing, and that shook him up pretty bad because he didn't know what it was. When asked whether or not she had seen anything out of the ordinary on their farm, initially said no. She then related that she was riding her horse on the back of the property one day, and there was no one else on the property. She was coming up a hill, and out of nowhere something large hit her in the back. Based on her recollection, I gather that the impact hurt, and she was also upset about mud getting all over her jacket. She related that she looked around and could see that it was large, softball-sized mud ball that hit her in the middle of the back. She said she looked around and tried to see who had thrown it at her, and it was going to give her some peace of mind, but there was nobody there that she could see. Today's sixth part of the upload, looking for an explanation of what this might have been. About two years ago, I was with some friends in the car outside of one of my friend's house. It was about nine, winter time, so relatively dark, but a clear night. 
There were five of us in the car, myself and a friend in the passenger seat, as well as three friends sitting in the middle row. It was an SUV. We were talking about some random topic when all of a sudden I felt an intense feeling go down my spine like we were being watched. I turned to my friend in the passenger seat and he looked up at me at the same time like he had just seen a ghost. I asked him if he felt it too and he said yes. None of my other friends in the back felt anything. We felt really strange but ignored it and kept talking. A few minutes later, the feeling came back stronger than before. And once again, my friend and I looked at each other at the same time. He looked right past me out the driver's side window, which my back was to, and told me not to turn around. None of my other friends saw anything, but he said there was something out there. And I felt some sort of presence behind me. We took turns describing to each other what we sensed it looked like, and we were for sure both seeing and sensing the same thing. It was some sort of white humanoid, but the details of what we sensed are fuzzy. Clear descriptions later. After a minute or so, it went away, and we were totally spooked. This is where it gets weirder. My friend and I both felt the presence making circles around the car, and we began to both see green glowing circles moving quickly around it. It's hard to explain, but we couldn't really see them. It was more knowing they were there. They began to move faster and we were freaking the hell out. Then all of a sudden they disappeared. Once again, we both saw and felt these, but nobody in the back did. Then one of the passenger seat friends and I were leaning back to talk to the middle row. When all of a sudden on the sidewalk behind the car there was a flash of white light and a creature sprinting down towards us. It was pure white, bipedal, somewhat humanoid, very tall and lanky, I'm going to guess maybe seven feet. It had a horse-shaped head, long, black, thin hair, black eyes and claws. My friend and I in the front were screaming simultaneously. I started the car and got the hell out of there. Once we were far enough away, we once again took turns describing to each other what we saw, and we were both on point with each other's descriptions. I took everyone home, then I was driving alone. I still felt the presence behind me. I couldn't tell if it was in the car or not, but whenever I got to a stoplight or sign, I felt like it was catching up, so I sped the rest of the way back. Once I got home, it was gone. Both my friend and I could sense that whatever it was was not there to harm us, just make its presence known. Nothing like this has happened before or since. The only re relevant connecting factor between the passenger seat friend and I that those in the back didn't share was we are both Christian at the time. Today's seventh part of the upload. I was working as a broadcast engineer and a few years ago I received a phone call around 9.30 or 10 o'clock from our on-duty engineer that our OTA over-the-air signal had gone out and we were off the air on our OTA platform. The call was to several other engineers as well as my boss at the time. We figured out that the platform was at our transmitter and needed to be corrected manually. Our boss asked for someone to volunteer to go up with him, and after a few seconds of awkward silence, I offered. So, our RF transmitter site is located on the top of Mount Beacon in Beacon, New York, which is about an hour plus from our station. At the time, I had never been up there, and was going in the middle of the night was a little spooky. I met my boss, and we drove together, got to the mountain a little before midnight, the road up the mountain to the transmitter site is long, narrow, windy, and steep dirt road with a lot of big, loose rocks, so the drive up and down is scary enough. I can't emphasize enough how dark the drive was, like it's pitch black. A few times while going up, we would see headlights coming towards us of people out with their off-road jeeps, which wouldn't be as weird if it wasn't in the middle of the night. We also saw two different campfires deep in the woods, which I just assumed were groups of locals hanging out and drinking. My boss told me that locals hang out near the transmitter site sometimes, 
and should be avoided as they had the tendency to be sketchy. Didn't seem too sketchy to me, but what did I know? It was my first time being there. My boss also told me that he never travels to that mountain without a gun. He said it's more than locals. I've seen stuff out there I can't really explain. We get to the top, do our work on the transmitter, close everything up, and start heading back down. As we were heading down, we were practically to the steep part of the road when you pretty much have to ride your brake because your car won't stop till the incline levels out to a little. All of a sudden, three deer sprint out in front of us, not even looking at our oncoming car, causing us to swerve since we are already riding the brake. The front of the car hit a rock which stopped our momentum. My boss instantly turned the car off and once the sound of the engine died, we heard something big run the opposite direction away from the road up the natural slope of the hill. I shined my flashlight in the direction, but whatever it was was already out of sight. We could still see branches moving and leaves settling from the disturbance by whatever had run through it. I asked my boss if he thought it was another deer or possibly a bear, and he replied, bears run on all fours. Whatever that was ran on two legs, and bears don't hunt deer. Something was chasing them. When we first heard the footsteps, I would estimate they were as close to 15 feet from the car. When it started to run away, but appeared to be standing over us as there was a natural incline in the mountain, there are a lot of logical explanations, like my boss was just trying to scare me, or it was a local walking, running through the woods. But here are a few things to consider. Yes, it could have been a person walking alone through the woods, but why chase deer? And why run away from a car? Also, whatever ran away was out of sight quickly, like within three to four seconds of starting to run up the hill. This person would have had to be in the greatest shape ever to run up that hill. This also sounded way too big to be a bobcat, mountain lion, or coyote. My boss is not the kind of guy that would try to scare people. He's very stern, all business type of guy. He seemed pretty rattled by this and wanted to get off the mountain as soon as possible. I ended up going back up the mountain many more times before leaving for my new job, and I never saw nor heard anything like that night. However, I never went back after sunset. I no longer work for this company, and this company no longer owns that transmitter site, so I will likely never have a reason to go back. I don't know if any other reported sightings or experiences in that area, but I do know that over the years there has been many car accidents on that road. I assume all the accidents are due to the poor conditions of the road, but honestly, I have no idea. All right, guys, some very terrifying experiences out of the LBL. Let's jump into that very interesting and very creepy video clip. All right, guys, I hope you all enjoyed today's bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. See what I mean about that video clip? Uh, that's a very deep, very long, powerful howl. Um, 
like I said, I mean, I've watched different videos like many of you uh, on wolves. Oh, really quick, I wanted to address this. There was a video I did a couple, couple days ago when I was talking about migration. And I said that wolves don't migrate. And uh, this fellow wrote a paragraph stating that wolves migrate. And uh, my response to that is, please research before commenting because wolves do not migrate. It's a, it's a very simple, you open up your phone app on Google or your computer, Yahoo, whatever you want, and you type in, do wolves migrate? And it says, no, they go where the food goes. It's not a migration. Um, so I, I honestly, when I do stay, say things, um, that are not theory or ideas, I usually 100% am pretty sure of myself. Um, because why? Because I've researched it, not because I know, not because I'm some genius, because I'm far from that. Um, it's because I am, know I'm going to make a statement and I want to make sure that it's a correct statement. When it comes to theory and idea, then it's up in the air, you know? Um, I guess we'll always have people when it comes to theories and ideas well, while sharing theirs that, um, you know, they will be adamant about it being real, which I don't understand that because there is no backing. <laughs> but anyway, that's neither here nor there. But that that base in that that length of that howl is just frightening and he's obviously frightened because he jumps up in that excavator real quick so guys i hope to see you all tonight at tonight's saturday nightmares live from new york with you and i uh, a lot of fun a lot of experiences a lot of just chit chat with each other talk movies music uh world events encounters yada yada so with that being said Thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes the channel continue to grow and go and what makes it special. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.